Okay, I want to talk about something called the three pillars of good UI architecture. Good UI architecture is an architecture that is decoupled from the framework, okay? That is the fundamental thing about building a good software, is that what you will do is you will use separation concerns to decouple away from the things that the tools that we are built to sort of interact with things like browsers and interact with the, you know, disk or, you know, interact with APIs and stuff like that. So the fundamental rule about all of this is to basically abstract things away from the framework. And we have something called the three pillars here at Logic Room. I want to just talk you through them. So if you imagine there's a, a sort of wheel and there's three pillars in it and each one of the pillars will sort of have an arrow pointing into the next one and these three pillars all feed into each other. The very first pillar that we use at Logic Room is something called the black box and the black box basically is uh, it builds on this thing that I've just said to you about abstracting away the framework and it says that normally what happens is that engineers will build components and they'll take a lot of the information that needs to go into the components such as business processes, data models, view models, API models, etc. And they will pull all that information into the framework because the frameworks often have very powerful tools in them. Uh, you know, if you're using something like React, it's got your know, state and props and like that. And it gives us a lot of ability to do things in the framework. And often what engineers do is they do do those things in the framework and they put too much information into the framework. So the very first pillar is called the black box. And the black box says, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of that information that doesn't necessarily need to go in the components. And we're going to pull it out into a separate external architecture that has no dependencies on anything and can be represented as just pure JavaScript. And what that enables us to do is to control the way that we import dependencies into our architecture and begin to leave the framework at the edge just doing what the framework is good at. So in the Angular world, it will just be the markup layer, will just live at the edge. In the React world, the same thing will happen. But in the Angular world, there are some other things because Angular actually provides other parts of the framework. But fundamentally, what the black box says is, hey, we're going to use whatever framework. We're going to make sure the markup stays in one very thin layer. We're going to pull all the stuff we usually put into the markup and the components. We're going to pull them out and put this in this separate, isolated black box box, which is just a mental model that you can use to begin to control your architecture. After you've completely separated out all of these things into the black box, the next pillar is called the testable UI architecture. And the testable UI architecture says that once you have got everything out of the black box, you can then begin to treat the black box as something called a finite state machine. Now, for those of you that don't understand what a finite state machine is, let me just really quickly explain to you. If I have a car and the car is sitting there on the road, idling away, we would say that that is in a state of being idle, okay? Then they put it, engage the gear, and then uh, press the accelerator and the car is now in a moving state, okay? So we've gone from idle to moving, but there was a process in the middle and that process was called accelerate. So a finite state machine simply could be said to be of this car. Uh, it could be said to be, you know, if the finite state machine is simply it's idle, we accelerate and it's moving. So the finite state machine always starts at one state, has a process and then ends in another state. And so what we do is we say, hey, let's turn the black box into a finite state machine. Because we've completely separated all of the uh, architecture into this black box and encapsulated it, we can run the black box to something called an executable specification. And that means that we can run all of the specifications that that black box needs to do, that the business has said it needs to do as a finite state machine. So we can literally start the black box in one state, we can run some sort of processes, some sort of merge data models, we can um, transform data models, we can run business processes, we can generate new models that are ultimately going to be sent back to the component. We can run it as a finite state machine, and we can have simple inputs, and simple outputs, and we can test that thing in isolation because we have abstracted it away from the components and away from the complexity, okay? That's the second part, is the testable UI architecture to create the black box, the finite state machine. And in the fourth pillar, what we do is realize that uh, components can be radically simplified once you've pulled all that information out of them. And most people know that we the compo components have got, you know, you've got dumb components, and then you've got all other types of components. And often what happens is engineers get into a situation where they have components can be built in a myriad of different ways. Sometimes they like to pass data in via data binding. Uh, sometimes they like to load dependencies from somewhere else. And um, sometimes, you know, they're using two-way binding or reactive architecture or whatever. But Fundamentally, what we say is once you have abstracted the black box away and you've separated it, then you've created, turned it into a finite state machine. You then can use your components to control the way the information is loaded in the black box at runtime. Okay, and what I mean by this is that if you take something like a dumb component, we are just going to be taking information out of the black box and displaying it. We're going to have no more inputs into the black box, but you can then feed the types of components into three more types of components. And these are the ones that we've identified at Logic Room. Uh, which basically says, 
how you begin to load dependencies in the black box so that your UI app and your component app can begin to orchestrate the way that the black box is loaded. For example, we may have a certain type of component that's going to invoke the very start of the component tree, and that's going to start a part of the black box, a certain finite state machine within the black box, for example, called Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a finite state machine that we teach here at Logic Room, which is where we say we're going to bootstrap the black box into being able to do something that is going to run before all the other business processes and business logic and transformations run. For example, logging in and refreshing a token from a uh, federated login authentication system, as an example, okay? So the three pillars are black box, extract everything away, testable UI architecture, turn the black box into a finite state machine that you can independently test as an executable specification. The third one is to have a very simple policy where you can break all your components down to, you may find more components, but what we teach is four different types of components, a dumb component, and then three other types of components, which are explicitly designed to control the black box and invoke certain parts of the finite state machine in a way that helps you uh, progressively build and scale and test the black box and ultimately plug that back into the framework so that you've got a completely decoupled framework agnostic, which is what we call it, architecture. If you've enjoyed today's video about the three pillars, I'd like to invite you to a free web training class that I'm running this week. In the web training class, we're going to be going over three things. In the first part, we're going to be going over the eight principles that you can begin using today to enable you to build, test, and scale better code in any UI architecture uh, using React, Angular, or Vue. In the second part, I want to show you how to use something called a holistic developer process, which is going to enable you to write better code as you code up your apps through the day. It's going to give you the process that you can work with, the human-centric, developer-centric process. And in the third part of the training, I'm going to teach you how you can make the transition from being a regular engineer to being a UI architect engineer. And I'm going to take you through the steps this involves so you can begin thinking like a UI architect and understanding things like the three pillars of good UI architecture. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you want to take me up on the offer of the free training class, click the link on or around this video. You're going to get taken through to another page. Hope to see you on the other side. <laughs>